We're developing the largest business for the whole history of civilization. This is that Stevenson, Ford and Boeing have made together. This revolutionary transport system is essential for every country, every city, every family and every man. It is essential for humanity. The development of transport innovation rail Skyway has taken 36 years and over 7 billions of rubles. For selling the technology, it is necessary to build test sections on which the technology will be certified and demonstrated to the customers from all over the world. For this purpose, in the nearest three years, we should invest the assets proprionate to the committed ones. After that, we will become the first in the world transport sector, the volume of which exceeds the Russia's budget several times, and occupy not less than 50% of this market. Boeing is one of the brightest examples demonstrating such facts of history. Empires are to be ruined, the Soviet Union has fallen apart, but its infrastructure, traffic one mostly, has been still functioning, like the Trans-Siberian Railway. That was built a century ago and passed through the revolution as well as civil war and world wars. The track structure of Skyway is based on the string rail technology. These tracks will serve for the benefit of the people for ages, bringing the profits to those who once have ventured and invested their money into this innovation technology. Being certified, the project of innovation will turn into the project of investment. Then the base of this technology-targeted transport project will be realized on all the continent of our planet. Every investor, depending on the volume of its committed facilities into this technology, will own kilometers or meters of these tracks. As for infrastructure ownership and its dividends, they will devolve to future generations. Inexpensive, safe, effective roads are not required for the state and government officials, but for ordinary people, who pay fares out of their pockets. And these people are not just users, they are taxpayers too. So to say, it is required only for us. For this reason, it was decided to start the innovation corporatization at English law on the terms profitable for investors. New investors have the chance now to buy the shares of our company with large discounts. Today it costs several thousand rubles, but tomorrow it will cost millions of rubles. Let's build our future worth living together, comfortable, safe, ecologically clean, with high living standard. Let's build the future, which will be able to devolve to our children and grandchildren for no shame. Can you hear me, guys? Okay, if you could, if you can hear me, could you just, can you please put pluses if you can and minuses if you cannot hear me? So I know we can start the webinar and everyone can hear what I'm saying. Okay, seems like a couple of people. Okay. Okay, I would like to start with saying welcome. You made it. Uh, like, thanks for coming tonight. I know we have been having problems with some links and uh, like with the wrong links, but hopefully um, some people can. Uh, can still join us. So I would like to start this webinar with just a small video just to warm you up. Um, just want to know whether you can see my screen also. Can you see my screen? And if you can see my screen, can you just please put pluses if you can and minuses if you cannot. Okay. Okay, perfect. So this is a small video about today's topic, which is the Skyway, which is the new um, transportation system. Okay, I'm just gonna start now. Tens of thousands of years ago, primitive people brought fire into caves. This was the first technology. Our ancestors began to heat up their dwellings with fire and cook meat on coals. Many of them didn't live to the age of 20 and died from lung cancer. The air in the caves was filled with unbearable smog. What has changed since then? Mankind has improved technologically and the number of fires has increased considerably. These fires now burn in car engines, diesel locomotives, motor ships and airplanes, in heating furnaces, in atomic power stations, in boiler rooms and in factories. 
a number of the harmful and poisonous elements in emissions have become considerably more abundant in comparison to those primitive fires. Thanks to surface and air transportation, we are breathing air, drinking water, and eating food products that contain a bit less than half of the components of the periodic table of elements. Nitric oxide, carbon, sulfur, aldehyde, benzopyrene, soot, mercury, arsenic, lead, chlorine, polynuclear hydrocarbon, and radioactive isotopes. The list of these scary names can go on forever. It is precisely this atmospheric cocktail that we get whenever we go to the park to breathe the fresh air. The increasing number of motor vehicles has caused the concentration of these harmful substances to become lethal. There's also no point in forgetting about aviation. Each launch of a heavy rocket, as well as every flight of a multi-engined aircraft, creates a hole in the ozone layer that is comparable in size with the area of a European country. By the end of the century, transportation will have the capability of killing more than 150 million people in accidents and disasters and causing over 1.5 billion people to become invalids and cripples. How to avoid making this monstrous sacrifice? How to keep our planet green and not ash gray? Ride horses? Walk? Hey, Marty McFly, could you lend us, the planet's current inhabitants, 7 billion hoverboards from your past future? Indeed, effective transport has already been developed by the scientist Anatoly Yunitsky. This genius of an engineer invented the ideal transport in every sense of the word. It's called the Rail Skyway. More than 30 years and several hundreds of millions of dollars have already been invested in order to bring Yunitsky's project to life. What do you envision to be the transport of the future? Just imagine a lightweight train or a sports car with steel wheels, which is situated on open work elevated rails. Inside the rails, tensioned wires are stretched with the strength of hundreds of tons. Due to the ideal evenness of the track and the super aerodynamics of the rolling stock, it is capable of reaching speeds of up to 500 kilometers per hour. The cost of the trip to you will be seven times cheaper than that of a conventional train. The level of safety will be 2,000 times higher than traveling by automobile, and a trip will require 10 times less electrical energy or fuel. And that's not the whole story. The tensioned wire rails are mounted onto lightweight but exceptionally durable supports that make it possible to save the layer of fertile soil, which is currently located under highways and railways, from destruction, an area four times greater in size than the total territory of Great Britain. This soil will remain alive, it will breathe, and the green plants growing on it will produce sufficient oxygen for billions of people to breathe. In order to implement this form of transport all around the world, it must be compared with equivalent amounts that have already been spent, which today is approximately the same cost as two or three football players or one or two paintings by not even the most famous of impressionists. And it is possible to make this a reality with only public funding. This is precisely the type of transport that is needed by you and me, and only we can cause this project to become a reality. Become a co-investor of the public transport future. Invest in the future of your planet. Find out more. So, that was it for the video. And um, I was just going to put up the presentation now, the slides. And if you could just put pluses or minuses if you can see the presentation. Okay, perfect. So I have actually two requests. So one request would be if you could just take a piece of paper and pen just in case you want to write something down or something is unclear. So you can just do your own research or if you just would like to know something more, it's always good to take notes. And the other thing is maybe I would like to invite you to, to switch off, off your phones or just put them on silent just in case you don't get distracted. Um, so, my name is Leo Dimitrosi, um, so I'm one of the presenters for tonight. Um, this presentation will be in two parts. So, the first part, I will tell you a little bit more about Skyway as a technology and why it's important today and 
and why we are having this webinar today. And the second part will be about the investment part. It's more like the business side of the project. So um, I'm happy that at least a couple of you made it tonight. Um, so yeah, so basically, just before I start, I would like to just tell you a little bit more about myself and why I'm participating in this amazing project. My brag my I have two passions. One is health and fitness, and the other one is future technologies. And obviously, transportation is one of the one of the biggest kind of uh, areas down to do with like future technologies because as you probably know and, and you can understand that the transportation as movement itself is like super important considering without transport there is no way around like we couldn't go to work or, or travel it wouldn't be possible so um, my background is nothing to do with technology as I already mentioned but I have done quite a lot of research in this since the past year uh, when I joined Skyway company. So basically why I think this is important and, and why now? Because I mean you probably know that traveling is important and, um, and maybe you, you even have noticed that the transportation as we see today um, it's failing and it's not working anymore because I mean Trains are great, but as every single invention at some point becomes old, you know, like if you remember probably, well, maybe you don't remember, but Motorola made their phone, like the first phone, I think, like the first call from a mobile phone was, was made, I think, in 1978. And, uh, and those phones back there in the 80s, they just looked like bricks. But now we have phones that are like a million times smaller and they have more energy and more power and more memory. And the same should happen with transportation because the first train was invented in like 19th century. So today we are in the 21st century. So obviously, like things have to change. And the moment is important and the other most important thing is time time is our greatest asset like we can always make more money or we can uh, always like do different things but we never gonna be able to get back time and if I have to travel somewhere instead of like one hour like four hours I mean I could be doing something else I could be spending time with my family with my friends and it's just common sense so why we keep spending time on traveling if we could just make if we could just make our lives so much easier. And speaking of just making life easier, I mean you probably have come across to some of the most popular um, problems these days, which are like spread of diseases, like poverty, hunger, like lack of drinking water. You know, for example, researchers have done some tests and by 2035, I think 66% of the world's population won't have access to clean drinking water, which is two thirds of the people basically, which I think is pretty, I mean, shocking considering that, I mean, 66% is a serious number. I mean, but I would say it's not the issue, like, None of these problems that you see on the screen are like the major issue. Like the major issue is overpopulation. And it's not that we don't have enough space on uh, on on Earth. It's just that we are concentrating on the basically on the capitals. Because everyone is moving from the countryside to the capital because there's more work, like there's more possibilities because like there's no jobs in the countryside. So basically, if there's too many people concentrated on like capitals and we are just getting more and more and more, it, it kind of leaves us in a bad situation. So 
I mean, you probably have across have come across the issues like traffic jams, and that like houses are too expensive in the capital, then you can't afford it, or you have to live in a small room or a small flat because there isn't enough uh, enough enough time or not enough money. So basically. Like, I think we have quite a few issues here, and they all have something to do with us being too many at, at one place. For example, we know, like, megapoles like China, I don't know, New York, London. Uh, I mean, there's way too many people, and there's not enough houses, and there's not enough resources. But I believe if we get the right infrastructure in, in place, then it shouldn't be an issue, but things have to change for us to live a better life. But to understand the common issues in the 21st century, we need to go back on the 18th century to understand where all these issues came from. Because, I mean, 18% of the world's population today, on its own, are relying on fossil fuels, because that's the most common energy source. It took approximately 150 million years to create fossil fuels, but starting from the 18th century till today, we have burned almost all the resources out, which means that we need to, ASAP, we need to change the way how we use energy and how we move around, which is, for example, transportation, because transportation takes a lot of energy. Um, and just to give you an example, for example, if you drive a car, right, you need to spend approximately, let's say, I don't know, I don't drive and I'm not an expert, but let's say 10 liters per 100 kilometers. And, I mean, if you compare that with, uh, let's say, a transport that could take 1 liter per 100 kilometers, you most likely would choose to use the transportation that takes less energy. But back to the 18th century, like the energy involved a human animal and both labor. And the land was uh, slightly un unnourished, and I think the most common energy source were in a form of, of windmills. Like later on uh, in the 19th century, as the technology developed, obviously we had tractors and steam engines and trains. Um, obviously, to increase the import and export so people can travel from one city to another city or even from one country to another country. And obviously, land started to become slowly by slowly turn into concrete jungle. And you can see today, like, there isn't that much greenery out there. There's only roads, cars, houses, and we just keep building and building, like, and it seems like there's always some roadworks, there's always some junctions, like, um, there's just too many things going on, and it's because we need to travel around. But what I have noticed, people are concentrating too much on the existing and trying to upgrade things, and I think it's just how human psychology works, right? Like, like people do not think exponentially, but they think in a linear way, and it's going to fail soon because, I mean, we cannot stop, like, Humans cannot keep um, upgrading existing models, existing transport, because they're going to fail. And um, it's just a waste of money, really. I mean, you could put much more money into like things that matter, for example, um, clean water or just helping people who are in need. And that's so important. But just somehow people are ignoring like the actual issues. And it's all about saving planet, really, because, I mean, if, if you think about it, um, if, if we uh, are harming nature, like, nature strikes back. And Earth doesn't need us humans to sustain the life. I mean, in the end of the day, like, we are going to be the ones who will extinct if we're not going to change the way we interact with the nature and hence all the 
fossil fuels, it's literally, we are just digging holes in Earth. And we are wondering why we have uh, earthquakes, tsunamis, because we're actually harming nature. And um, basically, we are fast approaching global transportation crisis. I'm, sh I'm sure ev everyone can sense it and visualize it. I mean, you we all been in that situation where you are just stuck in a traffic and you feel useless because there is no way around it. You have just the road, you have too many cars and too many people driving and you're not getting anywhere. So, I mean, it is the end of the road for the transportation we know so far. It's just a question whether you are ready to join the new revolution if you're interested in it. And, I mean, the modern goal is to create a technology to harm an environment as least as possible by going green. But from what I have seen and what I have researched on and the people I have spoke to from the industry who understand what's going on in the world is that the technology is actually not becoming uh, less impactful, it's just becoming smarter. So what are the alternatives, right? The 30 years from now, the oil reserves will run out completely and the combustion engines that our cars have now, they just gonna be history and like the cars you have now they're probably gonna lay museums and you probably have heard about this that like a lot of car companies are already having hybrid engines but well like if you think about it why are they having these engines? But to be fair the tech revolution is already here um, you probably have heard about Elon Musk which is the CEO of Tesla car and, and SpaceX. Like you can write his name down, Elon Musk. He's a, he's he's a he's a true inspiration, and and someone else also is. If if for example Steve Jobs is the genius of the computer, I would like to introduce you with Anatoly Unitsky, which is the man while we all are here tonight, who is the guy behind Skyway Technology. So let me introduce you to Anatoly Yunitsky, who is the CEO of Skyway, and he, he's also a scientist, an inventor, and businessman, author and chief designer of string technology, director also of two projects of United Nations organization, member of USSR Cosmonautics Federation, author of over 140 inventions, 18 books, and over 200 scientific papers. And and the list goes on and on. He is a true de genius in transportation. He has, uh, I think, approximately 145 patents to do with transportation. So, um, what is Skyway? Those are not flying trains, but those are actually trains that are built on on pillars, suspensions, and uh, and supports just to keep it above the ground. And you probably are wondering how, how, that, how that would work. That's one thing that you probably are, are thinking now. But the other thing you probably might be thinking is that there are, there are something similar out there. Yes, there is, but not quite the same. Skyway technology is basically, it's an emulated transportation system where the movement is organized by means of suspended rails on supporting structure. It is a fast speed train that could pick up to 500 kilometers per hour. And not only that, I mean if the, if the train systems has to change, like there's supposed to be some other changes coming, which is the internet and transport will be combined. So it's not going to be only train, it will be also a exchange of information because if you think about it, I mean, I'm I live in London, right? And um, sometimes, well, every day I'm traveling underground, and I don't have Wi-Fi there, which means that for let's say half an hour uh, home and, and half an hour back, I mean, to work, it's like an hour without Wi-Fi. I mean, for those who are in business, you probably know that one hour of your time not being on social network can actually harm your business. So what does that mean? You need to have internet access everywhere. And the, the, like the phone companies 
do not exist anymore soon because we actually, how many of you call? I mean, most of us use Skype, uh, I mean, WhatsApp and like Viber to call people. Like, and the same is going to be happening with internet. I mean, internet soon will be accessible everywhere. Even now, I think it's like 70% of the world's population has more access to to internet like than ever before. Like an average boy in Africa now has access to internet and more information than let's say Ronald Reagan had in the end of 70s. And I think it's a huge shift and it's already happening. So Skyway has fast speed trains, the public transport and the cargo. So what are the differences? Like the fast speed train is going to be running, let's say, from city to city, from country to country, with a maximum speed of 500 kilometers per hour, which I think is pretty amazing. And for um, and for um, approximately, it will have enough energy for 10,000 kilometers, and at one time it will be able to carry around 500 people. So I mean. You probably think, yeah, but I can always take the plane. But the planes are really expensive and they do harm the environment because the amount of kerosene that they spread in the air, I mean, it, it ends in our lungs in the end of the day. And, and also, when you travel with a plane, like, you, you have to go to the airport, you have to check in, check out, all the luggage, all that stress. And it's un unnecessary because you actually don't need that. You can just get on the train and you just can be somewhere, let's say, in Berlin in two hours if you travel from London. Or, or literally anywhere, like 500 kilometers per hour. Like, basically, you could live anywhere and you can still travel to work on time. And that would be amazing. I think that's the most interesting thing about this project is that you can be anywhere and you can still get on time to work because there is no inter interaction with other public transports or, or cyclists or pedestrians or you don't have to get like you don't need to be stuck in traffic it's just quick uh, it's green and it's amazing like the other exciting one is the public transport um, which could go up to 120 kilometers per hour and it could just mean that we will have more space for parks playgrounds and just people to walk around and um, we it means that you are getting to work on time because there's no traffic jams. And the cargo. Like so many places in, in the world, they have a lot of natural resources, but they're not yet accessible. As an example, I could give you a ex volcano called the El Mutun, which is located in Bolivia. Um, they have quite a lot of iron there. But as it's located in a volcano in the middle of jungle, there is no transportation system so far that could go there and take it out. Because that would mean, let's say, if you would use just an average train, it would take forever to build and that would harm all the forests and you would have to cut all the trees. And that's not what we want. Um, the benefits of this technology. Decrease of capital expenditure for constructions and the reduction of operating costs, which is the apex and um, apex and opex. So it's like if you don't understand what how that works, an example: a capex is basically a cost of buying a printer, and opex is a cost of let's say ink, just to make it work. Um, that means an access to new remote territories, islands, mountains, and seashells, reduction of repair costs and war costs. And uh, it's net costs in comparison to speed, railway, magnetic levitation trains, and aircrafts are five times lower, as you can see on the chart here. Um, at the beginning, obviously, it will run on, on fuel, but it will take ten times less fuel than a car, for example. Uh, but uh, but like later on, as the technology will develop, eventually it will be able to run on, uh, let's say, solar energy. And that only means that there is more space for animals to migrate. For example, um, the statistics shows that by 2030, quarter of the species will be extinct, 
And I mean, there's no surprise because we just build houses and trains and just cities and species have no place to, to literally migrate. So hence animals do extinct because we are harming the nature and like we are the only ones who actually are damaging this world in the end of the day. Um, stability on ice, glaciations, nordics, fogs, the dust and sands. Um, how this is going to work, it's pretty simple because the skyway technology is going to be built on anti-levitation structures which is something similar on how they build houses in Japan and, and China where they have all these um, uh, earthquakes. Um, I would like to introduce you with Mazdar. You probably are wondering what does Mazdar has to do with this project. Well, it's pretty simple. Mazdar is the first post, post petroleum city in the world. And it's built in very close to Dubai and um, all the money that Arab Emirates earned from oil, they literally reinvested to build Mazdar. Mazdar is the, is the first post petroleum city which is built on one planet living uh, concept and it's 100% self, self, self sustainable. My end result is to find uh, a way how to build new cities so everyone can have a home and we, we don't get too much stuck in the capital because I mean who wants to live in the capital if there's because every, everything is getting more expensive and more crowded and I would just like to live in somewhere where it's like green and and it's beautiful as Mazdar. Like we, we don't necessarily need to have 100% self-sustainable cities, but at least half sustainable cities. I mean, I know this is all sounds too or, or, or overwhelming and possibly it's hard to take in. But I mean, I think it makes so much sense to implement Skyway because, I mean, Earth has enough for everyone and everyone wants to travel and explore new cities, new continents and just in places we haven't been before and there's enough space for everyone but you need to get the right infrastructure in place and we should stop living in scarcity of resources because we have enough for everyone but yet not accessible. So I would like to just finish by saying that um, I would like to I would like to quote Buckminster Fuller, who is an amazing entrepreneur, philanthropist, and who once said, um, "You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To so change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete." So what does that mean? It means that we should stop upgrading our phones, our cars, our like lives and just transportation system. We should just change it completely because that's how we can make this work. Because as time goes by, like the old, old school technology is just not working at all. And the best way to predict the future is by creating and investing in it. And if you want to be part in the future, you need to invest in it. And anyhow, um, I believe that technology it, it is the ultimately one of the best investments because I mean it's very exciting there are so many new things coming up but anyway I think that's a story for another day uh, so I would like you to to introduce to Mila uh, which is a, my colleague and she will tell you a little bit more about like the business side of the Skyway um, hello guys can you hear me if you can? Can you please put pluses? Okay. Annette can hear me. Great. Uh, can you see my screen? Can you please put pluses if you can see my screen? Okay, perfect. Um, let's begin um, with the part um, which is called investment and capitalization. Um, sorry. Uh, before going further, I just want to also introduce myself. 
Um, as Valda said, my name is Mila, and I'm very passionate about um, investment, about the um, business side, uh, sales and marketing. I have a uh, background to work in with the sales for um, a few years now, and I really feel uh, passionate about creating uh, new new businesses, new um, streams of passive income. Uh, I'm really, to be honest with you, I'm really just in the beginning of my journey, but at the same time, I do really feel there is a lot of opportunity on this world when you can invest your money, invest your time, and of course you can benefit from it. So therefore, uh, the first time I came to the Skyway, it was one year ago, and to be honest, I was uh, from the beginning a bit skeptical because uh, on that time we had such a little information available in English, and um, it sounded uh, like something um, like amazing. I never heard of some, something like this before and as well as that um, technology is uh, like it's awesome a field to invest uh, because it's developed very rapidly you can earn very good returns so uh, now it's been a year I'm with the Skyway and I'm really grateful and I'm really happy that um, I listened to people who told me about this and I'm sure by the time I will explain your part which is called investment and capitalization you also would have some idea what is this uh, what is this about what is the returns uh, what is the possible investments we seek in uh, before going into a bit more details I want you to read first a uh, disclaimer um, I want you to understand that um, what we do is um, we just um, provide a new advice uh, we are not trying to, to sell you something. Um, the only reason why we do this um, webinar is just to get you, give you an idea what other what possible ways to invest. What is the Skyway? So before um, before acting on this advice, you should consider appropriateness of this advice, having regard to your own objectives, financial situation, and needs. Um, also, the attendees might accept that the sole responsibility associates with the use of material given, irrespective of the purpose of which such use or result apply. So this information um, on this presentation is no substitute for any financial advice at all. Um, what is investment? It's actually pretty simple. Uh, investment means um, putting money work for you. Uh, there are many ways to in, you can go about investment. As you can see, it could be stocks, bonds, um, mutual funds, or alternative investment, um, real estate, or even having your own business. Each of these vehicles can um, have a positive and negative sides. And the point is, it doesn't really matter which method you choose for investing your money. The goal will be always to put the money in something which will um, get you gain you in return, an additional profit. Even though this seems like to be a very simple idea, this is the most important com concept for you to understand. But before going further, let's first uh, think why people want to invest. Uh, of course, some of us want to have um, financial freedom, we want to, want to um, invest because we want to travel, we want to spend uh, more time with our family, uh, we want to have a sense of security and just ability to um, afford the things what you want to buy in life. Uh, however, in our days I would say um, investing it's become a necessity. Um, I believe that if you not look after yourself and in, um, in the prospectus of um, three to five to ten to twenty to fifteen years, then nobody else will. So this is your job to find the ways you can create a different streams so you can retire safely and then you would be able to um, to put the money into something which definitely will work for you in the long term. Uh, a bit of statistics. As you can see from, from the screen, um, average percentage of the household um, from 2002 and 2012 um, increased by 5%. At the same time, if you look at the um, increase of average household spend on electricity and gas, so compared to 2002 2012, uh, electricity rate increased to 43% and the gas increased on 56%. Um, average monthly spend on household energy compared to 2002-2012, it's almost a 55% increase. And the last bit of statistic, which is just, I guess, the killer. Uh, the proportion of pensioners with a different source of income, which is 97% of all pensioners. Um, this is um, data taken from um, Department of Work and Pensions. 
So basically, uh, pension in 2012-2013 average is £133 a week for single and two, uh, £201 a week for a couple. And now you tell me, um, if you're a couple, what can you probably buy for £200 a week? Not much. I'm sure that you notice if you have a long uh, weekends or if you have a day off, what you do, you tend to spend. So can you imagine the rest of your life is one big holiday? So what would you do? Would you sit at home? Not really. You want to go somewhere out. You want to just spend the money. You want to travel. But having two hundred pounds a week for couple, this this is just impossible. I want to show you this slide not to scare you. Anyhow, this is the pure stats, and I believe that's numbers they can they can talk. So you do really need to understand what is real real life is and what is the heading up in the future. Uh, main objectives: Why people they uh, generally speak and they have a few fears uh, when consider um, what exactly want to park your money for investment. Of course, you need to think about the safety of capital, uh, your current income, and return on investment. Uh, these factors really should influence your investment decision, and of course, it will depend on your uh, personal uh, circumstances, uh, such as age, um, stage, your position, and etc. And just to give you an example, um, 75 years old um, lady, she would not invest um, as much money as a 30 years old businessman. So you also need to understand what tools to choose in order to fulfill your, your needs. But I guess the best advice um, I heard is that when you're choosing for investment, you really need to, uh, to choose to put the money on the different assets, just to differentiate your portfolio as much as you can, just to make sure if one of the vehicles wouldn't work, then clearly you have some backup plan. Otherwise, if you put all your money in one bucket, this could be too risky. Um, I, I really love, love this man. Um, it's Peter Lynch. He's an um, entrepreneur, businessman, investor. And one of the, his famous quotes, uh, the key organ for investing is the stomach, not the brain. Which means you need to understand um, how much risk you can stand to see in your investment. Uh, we already mentioned that there are many ways to invest your money. Of course, to decide which investment vehicle is suitable for you, you need to know uh, their characteristics and also uh, why they might be suitable for particular um, investment objectives. Uh, we will go a bit more details on other webinars definitely when I will explain each vehicle separately. Purpose of this one just to give you a brief idea um, what what each of these type of investment can be. Uh, the most common investment are alternatives. You can see them on uh, your right-hand side. Uh, most of us have heard about um, ISA, uh, bank, which is bank deposit. So you normally can go to the bank and park your money and have a return something around 5%. Uh, so it's not much, but this still is quite safe um, investment, and um, normally the people tend to invest with the bank. Uh, second one is Forex. This is a very risky investment. A statistic shown that around 93% of people who were ever invested in Forex, they unfortunately failed. That also tells you that um, the, risky the, the riskier investment is, uh, the more money you can get out of it. Uh, it is the fact that in Forex you can do up to, um, you can make up to 1,000% greater than to your initial investment, but from the other hand, it is very risky investment. And the real estate. Real estate is very popular, especially here in London. Um, however, it also can be quite risky if you don't know what strategy to use and where to buy, and also it's required to have uh, some uh, some money to start with. So therefore, real estate, um, it's considerably safe investment, but at the same time, you need to learn, you need to know the market, and you need to know uh, what type of investment, uh, what type of sorry, houses you invest, and, and what is your outcome. You're looking to get the, the short-term um, benefits, such as renting, or you're looking something for the long term, such as uh, renovating and selling the house, etc. Uh, Skyway investment. So Skyway, uh, they choose uh, crowdfunding which is um, equity-based investment uh, where users or crowd invest in a business and they receive the shares in return. Investors became a shareholders of the business and they can also benefit from the profit and from dividends. 
here I just want to show you examples of other investment. Um, for example, Boeing. I'm, I'm sure you all heard of, about this company. Uh, from 1975 to 1995, the stock price has increased from $1.64 to $67 which means the investors who invest uh, on 1975, uh, they got 40 times more the investment in 1995. Similar with the Microsoft. Uh, from 1985 to 1995, the stock price has increased from $1.93 to $19.50. It's 46.8 times greater than initial investment. Same with Coca-Cola and um, Apple and etc. Uh, here, I just want to give you like um, little case study uh, about the company Alibaba. Uh, I don't know if you've um, heard of this company before, uh, but this group began in 1999 when Jack Ma, you can see his picture on the right hand side, he found this website Alibaba.com. Uh, this is a business to business portal uh, to connect Chinese manufacturers with overseas buyers. And if you can see these figures, this, this is just amazing. In 2012, Alibaba Porters handed uh, 170 billion in sales. And September, after Alibaba went to IPO, initial public offering, Alibaba market value has measured as 231 billion. You can see, like, it's, this number is crazy. It's uh, one of the, I guess, um, biggest examples um, in our day so far. And um, if you can see that this company has been compared with um, companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft. And if you calculate the Alibaba profit, um, you can see, not, not, I'm not, not even about the profit, Alibaba value, uh, you can see that it's more than Amazon and eBay combined. Just to think about it. This company started in 1999, and I bet that only a few people know about this company. If, if, if I came back to you, if I came to you like uh, 20 years ago, and I was talking about, oh, this company, Alibaba, they do this and this, and they will do this and this and this in the future, would you believe me? I'm like, more likely no. You might say, oh, why well, do we need this Alibaba? We have like Amazon and eBay and who knows what other platforms. It's not going to work. But hey, this is the real examples when it is it's working. Same with the Skyway. Nobody nobody knows about this company, and we have lots of people who might think or who might object, saying, "Oh, who want to use this new transport system? Or who who needs this? Oh, we have a trains, we have a planes, we have a um, I don't know super electrical cars and whatever it is." But guys, this is working. This is happening right now. And my colleague Lalda, she explained you very carefully why we need this. So it's not like this idea came to Unitsky yesterday. It's been there for 36 years. So you just need to get a bit more information to really understand where the roots coming from and what you get from, from this investment. Uh, here you can see Skyway investment plan. It consists from 15 stages. Uh, we are now in stage number four. Um, the target is to meet IPO, which is initial public offering, in 2017. Um, and this marks a moment when the company is ready to capitalize. Every stage, of course, requires funding. And at this point, um, it's necessary to gather 7 million pounds for the project to be completed by 2017. Investors need to put together 300 million pounds, which is, um, to be fair, quite a realistic sum for such a um, revolutionary project. Here is your return. So if you go to the Skyway today and you, um, you log into the page, you will see this, um, this table, which shows you if you invest £1,000 today, you will get um, 20,000 shares um, in, in package, which is, um, um, which after company capitalized in 2017, you will have um, in return almost 20,000% 20, uh, more. You can see this table and depends how much money you would love to put, um, how much money you would love to invest, the certain return you will gain back. You can also ask a bit more detail on uh, the person who introduced you to this webinar. I'm sure they can explain a bit more details, what are other packages. But just for you to, to understand, I just highlight this for a package for 1,000, which is quite easy to see the numbers. That's if you invest today 1,000 and have three years' time, you can make a return on 20,000% more, which is like 
it's amazing investment. You would not be able to find anything like this in the market at all. Uh, this is just some of the five reasons why to invest. The first one is uh, global company ownership, uh, which means you will become one of the owners of the world's largest transport corporation. Uh, you will have an um, opportunity to change the world. Uh, as Malala said, um, now uh, technology is really developing rapidly and you also would have a chance to be part of this um, development, part of this technology. Um, intellectual property rights I mean that the company owns exclusive rights technologies to strings transport and according to independent experts, uh, cost of this technology is 250 billion pounds. Also, uh, this investment is very profitable. As I mentioned before, after IPO, public price would be one pound per share. And you can receive um, lifelong dividends, which will be able uh, to not just benefit to yourself, but talking about um, yourself, your kids, your grandkids, different generations. Because this project is not just for, for, for doing it and for selling. We have really long-term plans and trust me, it's going to take um, not just one year to complete and you will be able to benefit technology uh, for so many years um, in advance. I guess that's all for me for today. Uh, I'm really glad that um, you, some of you made it to listen to this webinar. I hope I, we just gave you some very useful information. You can take it. Um, if you need some more uh, information, you can ask the person who introduced you to this webinar. They should have uh, more information about it. Um, in the meantime, if you have um, any question, you can also, uh, or any thoughts, any ideas, you can share here in the chat. And otherwise, that will be all from for myself. Thank you very much for attending. If you guys have anything, any questions, any thoughts, you can now write it down in chat. If not, then I guess our webinar is finished. Thank you, Igor. Well, I guess we're done. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you, bye.